So because, you know, Zoom is fantastic and wonderful, it did not record for me at least the last session that we had, even though I pressed record, I have no idea where it went. I checked the cloud, it's not there, doesn't matter. I'm gonna re-record this whole thing. I'm sending it out to everybody. Uh, this is the day one of the challenge. We just basically rehashed it um, through there where we're gonna discuss all the little tips and tricks to make it a lot easier for you to start making videos right now. So um, let's get right on it. We're really focusing today on just the, the filming, the editing and the posting aspect of it all. So we're not really diving into the type of content you're doing, but more so of what are the simple things just to make your life easier on the filming, editing and posting. So first let's talk about filming. Um, we're not gonna get overly creative with this. This is just how do you make the, the best out of the least amount of effort um, in this case. The first part is, should you use the back camera versus the front camera when you're using your phone? Both have their benefits and detriments. The back camera, way better quality. However, you can't see yourself on screen. So it's a little bit harder to then press the record button. It's a little bit harder to position yourself and see if you're in the right light. However, if you use the front camera, most people, instead of looking at the screen, they start looking, uh, instead of looking at the camera, they start looking at the screen. And so you're not actually making eye contact with your audience. So if you use the front camera, it is imperative for you to look at the camera and not at the screen or something ticking on the screen or where you are, because it looks like you're speaking to somebody in a very distracted way as, as if you're looking away. Uh, that is why a back camera forces you to look at the camera. There's not really anything else to look at. And then the front camera, you know, if you can do it, it has its own benefits. I make it your choice. I usually strongly suggest the back camera if you're batching content. If you're recording a bunch of stuff and then cutting it apart, then it doesn't matter. If you're going to stop and start, stop and start, and or start and stop the other way, front camera is going to be better. Great. Next, we're going to talk about where. Eye level. You want the camera to be at or slightly above, you see, with the owl eye level, right? That's going to be the best angle. So none of the shooting down from the bottom um, kind of a thing when you're looking down on it. Right at it. Look at it. Arms length away uh, is best, but really it's just, just get in the camera, get in the frame. The next part is the lighting. Very simple for the lighting. There should be more light in front of you than behind you. Okay, so if there's a lamp, the lamp should be in front of you, shining onto you, then behind you, shining into the eyes of the audience. Same thing with the sun. If you're outside, the sun should be shining on you and not shining from behind you. All right. The next part is the sound. This is where people go, do I need an external mic? You don't need an external mic. An external mic helps. What you need to do is make sure that you reduce the amount of repetitive sounds that you hear all around you. So any kind of those hums, dings, Re repetitive things, it's a lot harder to remove them later than to actually just turn them off where you can. So it's not the end of the world, but if, if you don't have good, relatively good sound, that can be a real distractor. Um, and I should say that really it's if you have very bad sound. So if you wanna get an external mic for your phone, uh, they're like, you can get them for 20 bucks. Um, it's not too bad, but also you don't have to have one. I don't always use one. All right, now that was a lot of different stuff. So here's the quick filming cheat sheet. If you're about to film yourself, you're about to do this, there's a four steps and you immediately go in and do this. So first, camera at or slightly above eye level, all right? Second, more light uh, in front of you than there is behind you. And then look at the camera, not at the screen. Look at the camera, not at the screen. And then as soon as you press record, start talking. It's not press, wait a second and start talking. Just do it, just and start talking immediately. The technology is so good that really it, it will start recording right away, I promise. So that's filming, let's go into editing. Again, with the editing, we're gonna make it very simple, uh, meaning that I'm only gonna talk about two main things when it comes to true editing, if you would. So the first part is trimming. Uh, trimming simply being taking off uh, bits and pieces of the actual clip. Take off the front part if you're not speaking. So if you're paused for a second or two, clip that off. You can do that in Instagram or TikTok itself, or you can do it in the video editor of your choice. Most of your camera apps, you can even do an edit trim, even in those. Take off the end where you're not speaking. I would urge you that if you're starting things with my name is and anything like that, where it's just, it's not value, it might be hard for you to get into the rhythm while you're talking and recording. So you may have to do that. But when you're trimming, you can trim that part off and really get right to the value because it's gonna be the shorter valuable pieces that are gonna do the most and bring the most benefit uh, for you. So that's what the trimming. Next, we have the captions. This is adding captions in both uh, Instagram and TikTok. 
And what's really interesting here uh, is, so I have it for you here on, on the left is, is Instagram, right? And it's the simple, you have your, your video that you've selected, then in the editor, you go to that little button over there and then captions, you select it right there. And then it auto generates the captions for you. Um, on TikTok, it's much easier. It's at the very bottom. It's the very last one. You might have to click the little arrow to expand it and you will find right there is the captions. Now, here is the real, real great benefit. If you are somebody who uses uh, either TikTok or Instagram to edit your videos, what you can do is before you go to the description piece, on, on TikTok here on the right, you have this download button right there. There's the same download button on the left over here on Instagram. If you are not using any music that has any legal rights and copyright issues, which you don't have to use music. So for pretty much all of my videos, I don't use music. You can download it without any watermark, which means that you don't have to go then to another app and try to edit it and do all that stuff. You're done. You've edited your video. It has captions the way you want the captions to be on there. And now you can repurpose it then to the others, the Facebook, the TikTok, the um, YouTube and LinkedIn straight from there. If you did it on Instagram, right? Vice versa, if you did it on TikTok. So that makes it easier. That's all that we're going to cover in terms of editing. And lastly, we're going to talk about posting. Now, there are a lot of discussions about posting, and we're really only going to cover two things. We're going to cover the, uh, why are you going back there? What's wrong? We're going to cover the description, and then we're going to talk about hashtags very briefly. The description, very simply, should just be what is the video about? What did you talk about? Just a couple sentences. Most people do not read the descriptions on videos, okay? Most of the benefit for the description is SEO. So you're using various keywords that might be of, of interest to people. So you definitely can use that, but don't get bogged down with the description. One or two sentences, if you want a paragraph or two about your actual business that you can just copy and paste every single time. But other than that, description is just there more for, for SEO, or if somebody's really, really interested, most people are not gonna click on it. Next, we get to hashtags. And I like to tell people the three by three hashtag method only because not the number of hashtags, but the mindset behind the hashtags, it's, it just, it makes it easier for you to come up with hashtags for what you should be using. Because hashtag research, while great, it can just take up way too much of your time. And especially when you're just starting out, it's not as necessary as people think. It's not nearly as necessary. Truly the, the value of your content is the most important part. But the three by three hashtag method basically says this, you're gonna put three hashtags about what you talked about, the actual content, what you talked about. Three about who you are talking to. That is your target audience. So three hashtags about who your target audience is, maybe small business owners, um, maybe it's entrepreneurs, maybe it's writers, whatever it might be. And then three about why this is important, right? That's the hardest one for people. Usually why it's important is what's the result. Meaning that if you're talking about the importance of making videos, right? And, and here's an easy way to make videos. Why should people make videos? Well, people should probably make videos for their business because it will lead gen for them. It can nurture clients for them, right? It, it, it can really solidify and show their expertise and authority, right? You may not have talked specifically about authority, and all of those things in the video, but you were talking about some, something else. So that's that's the why. Now, when it comes to the number of hashtags, I, I mean, it goes all over the place. You hear people talking about that you should be using up to 20 or 30 on TikTok and Instagram. It's all over the place. I've seen videos that go completely viral and blow up with five hashtags. It's not, it, it's one of those things where I don't think anybody knows for sure. And if you're a business owner and you're trying to kind of figure all this out, um, it, just keep it simple. Keep it simple to these nine. You can use these exact same nine for every single video if you want to, if you're generally talking about the same stuff. Um, that is not going to be as detrimental to you as you may think. So, all right. Lastly, um, I know that I talked about this, but this is always a good reminder. This is the uh, three post ideas for you also to use as, as a result. Um, you can reuse these as many times as you want to because you will find that's what they're geared towards is the reusability. One, what went well at work today, right? What went well, one, you're talking about the positive side of things as opposed to always talking about the negative, things suck, it's bad. And then the other part is you get to tell people a little bit about work, right? 
And we're going to talk about briefly here in a little bit what this does not mean. But what will well it work today? There's an easy post for you, right? What have I stopped or will stop as a result of what I do for work, right? As a result of something that you've been doing, what are something that you've completely stopped or that you're intending to stop um, doing overall, right? For example, me, I don't care that much about views anymore because I know that that views on videos don't really mean as much uh, as the, the consistency, the engagement, like the comments and the likes and how much people actually benefit from your content. And the last part is why I think my industry is interesting. Right? Why do I think my industry is interesting? Now, what I did not say for these, when I said, what, what will it work? What I didn't say is, I'm amazing, hire me. That is not the purpose of your post at all. When I said, what are you going to be stopping as a result of what you do for work? What I didn't say is, I am perfect. And everything I do is amazing. I don't need to stop anything. I'm going to stop it. You know, being so amazing, I can. I'm just so great. No, that's not the post. This is not a braggy post. This is a realistic post, right? And the last part, when I ask you about your industry, you're not saying I'm the best in my industry. Stop saying I'm the best in my industry. That is bullshit. You're not the best in the industry. Um, and that's okay. You have plenty of other qualities, so many other qualities that really differentiate you from this. So... Focus in on those, and that's what we're going to be talking about. All right. Fantastic. On that, hopefully that gives you a little bit more of an idea of the things that we generally talked about. Now, there are far more nuances, and if you feel that you have the energy and the time to jump into the nuances of the number of hashtags and all those other things, sure, you can. But the, the two most important things are the quality of your content, and the consistency. That's it. Those are the two most important things around this. So if you doing hashtags and all of this is overwhelming and is taking too much time away, as opposed to just jumping on for 20 seconds, filming a video and posting it with very, very simple stuff, you're going to be so much better off jumping on and doing the quick video. So that is, that is my biggest thing on this is that we really need to get into the habit of creating it as opposed to being uh, paralyzed by the analysis of it. As always, send me questions or any other things that you might have around all of this. Um, and yeah, maybe I'll start making videos like this weekly to make it easier for all of you. And then we don't have to spend time in the group um, discussing all of this nearly as much. Uh, not that I'm against, but I'm just trying to figure out what serves you all best. Till next time.